Picture this, a flickering screen, the soft hum of static, anticipation hanging in the air like a forgotten melody. It was that pivotal moment when you first stumbled upon the 1984 TV series, Hunter. Do you remember the room, the lighting, the way the world outside seemed to blur into insignificance? Perhaps you were engulfed by the era's unmistakable charm, the nostalgia of an age gone by. And then, it happened, the characters burst forth, breathing life into the screen, etching their stories into your memory. A journey through the labyrinth of time, Hunter was more than a series. It was an immersion into the world of a renegade detective, the resonating echoes of crime's past, and the relentless pursuit of truth. Moments etched in time, moments that made you laugh, hold your breath, or feel the tingle of suspense crawl up your spine. Whether it was that unexpected twist in the plot, an exchange laden with emotion, or a daring chase that left your heart pounding, those moments have lingered on, woven into the tapestry of your own experiences. Now, let's peel back the curtain and reveal some enigmatic facts about the show. Did you know that the iconic trench coat worn by the protagonist was sourced from a vintage store and became an accidental symbol of Hunter's distinctive style? Or perhaps the behind-the-scenes anecdotes that colored the relationships between the cast, breathing life into the camaraderie you witnessed on screen. These fragments of trivia, like hidden gems, add depth to your connection with Hunter, reminding you that there's always more beneath the surface. So, let your thoughts drift back to that first meeting with Hunter, to the emotions stirred and the memories etched. It's not just a TV series, it's a part of your own narrative, an echo of emotions shared across time. And as you reflect, remember that the beauty of such encounters lies in their ability to carve stories within stories, leaving a mark that remains indelible. Remains indelible. In the 1984 TV series Hunter, the iconic character Rick Hunter's perennial penchant for driving junk cars wasn't merely a stylistic choice. It was a pragmatic solution to a production challenge. Scripts consistently called for his vehicle to meet its untimely demise, making it financially untenable to repeatedly wreck perfectly roadworthy cars. Unlike the on-screen portrayal, real-world police cars adhere to rigorous standards of maintenance and functionality, ensuring their reliability on the streets. Amid the series' ensemble of elements, one standout was Hunter's sidearm in Season 1, a heckler in Cock P9 Sport. This rare and discontinued competition handgun, with its distinctive polygonal rifling, delayed roller lock action, and adjustable features like trigger pull, sights, and more, showcased the technological innovations of its time. Available in both 9mm and 45 ACP, it mirrored Hunter's unyielding pursuit of precision in a world often defined by chaos. But before the handgun's prominence, it was Hunter's wheels that caught the eye, a 1977 Dodge Monaco painted in an unmistakable green hue. This sedan, emblematic of an era, became an extension of the character himself, traversing the gritty urban landscapes as Hunter tackled the gritty challenges of law enforcement. As the show unfolded, it was the sum of these meticulous details that elevated Hunter beyond a mere crime drama, cementing its place in television history. The careful orchestration of car crashes, the choice of a cutting-edge firearm, and the selection of a distinctive car all wove together a narrative tapestry that brought Rick Hunter's world to life. In the realm of television production, where every choice carries weight, Hunter deftly navigated the tension between creative vision and practical constraints. These deliberate decisions, often overlooked, contributed to the show's enduring resonance and its ability to captivate audiences, even decades after it first graced the screen. And so, in the midst of chasing criminals and unraveling mysteries, Hunter subtly showcased the intricate dance between storytelling and logistical considerations, reminding us that even within the world of fiction, every detail matters. In season 7 of the 1984 TV series Hunter, keen-eyed viewers might have noticed an intriguing uniform detail that subtly denoted the ranks of key characters. Detective Sergeant Rick Hunter and Officer Joanne Molensky, portrayed by Fred Dreyer and Stephanie Kramer respectively, sported uniforms adorned with distinctive insignias that spoke volumes about their positions within the police force. Hunter, a central figure in the show, wore a Sergeant II emblem, showcasing three chevrons with one rocker. Wolensky, portrayed by Kramer with equal intensity, displayed the rank of police officer 3 plus 1, signaled by two chevrons topped by a star. 
However, an astute observer might observe that protocol wasn't strictly adhered to in Hunter's case. As a detective, Hunter's chevrons lacked the expected Lowe's Inge indicator, a curious anomaly that piques the interest of uniform aficionados and fans of the show alike. Uniform intricacies aside, the show also witnessed behind-the-scenes drama during its third season. The decision to eliminate the character Sergeant Bernie Terwilliger sent shockwaves through the cast and fan base. Portrayed by Brian Keith, Terwilliger's impending demise sparked protest from none other than Fred Dreyer himself. In a swift script revision, the fatal bullet found a new target in Robert Firth, who had portrayed Riley Cosland in the prior season. Fate seemed to play a hand as Charles Whitmore, an actor who had done multiple roles, ended up directing these pivotal sequences. The convergence of these unexpected events highlighted the dynamic nature of television production and the unique challenges faced by the entertainment industry. Amidst these developments, the show maintained its attention to detail, even in seemingly minor aspects. Detective Sergeant D.D. McCall, played by the talented Stephanie Kramer, sported a badge with the discreet number 358. A seemingly innocuous detail, yet a testament to the dedication of the production team in crafting a world where authenticity thrived. As we delve into the multifaceted world of Hunter, these nuances remind us of the complexity that lies beneath the surface of our favorite shows. Beyond the gripping plots and charismatic characters, the series' attention to uniform accuracy, unexpected casting shifts, and badge number precision speaks to the rich tapestry that shapes our television experiences. And while time may march on, the details captured on screen remain as markers of a bygone era, inviting us to uncover the stories that lie beyond the frame. The Brass Cupcake Unveiled, trivia from the 1984 TV series Hunter in the Annals of Television History. Few crime-fighting duos have left as indelible a mark as Detective Sergeant Rick Hunter and Detective Sergeant D.D. McCall in the 1984 TV series Hunter. But beneath their tough exteriors and unwavering commitment to justice lie intriguing details that add layers to their characters. One notable facet lies in the unique nicknames bestowed upon them during the show's early seasons. Detective Sergeant Rick Hunter, portrayed by Fred Dreyer, earned the moniker The Head Hunter for his unrelenting pursuit of criminals. Meanwhile, his partner, Detective Sergeant Dee Dee McCall, played by Stephanie Kramer, was affectionately dubbed The Brass Cupcake, a paradoxical mix of strength and femininity that encapsulated her role as a determined investigator. These epithets not only showcased their dynamic crime-solving personas, but also added a touch of charisma to the gritty world they navigated. However, what truly tantalizes the aficionados of 80 Seconds TV trivia is the unexpected automotive crossover between Hunter and another iconic series, Hill Street Blues. In a serendipitous twist, Detective Sergeant Rick Hunter's blue car on the show was none other than the same vehicle seen in the sixth season of Hill Street Blues, specifically in the 11th episode titled Two Easy Pieces. An eagle-eyed observer could spot a spotlight mounting hole on the driver's side windshield pillar as a telltale clue linking the two appearances. This subtle nod to interconnectedness not only bridged the fictional universes, but also created a playground for enthusiasts to uncover hidden gems. Delving further into the intricacies of the show, Detective Sergeant Rick Hunter's badge number 89 housed an unexpected connection. This numerical emblem held a striking parallel to Dreyer's jersey number when he played for the Los Angeles Rams during his football career. This fusion of personal history and on-screen persona added a layer of authenticity to the character, making Hunter's badge not just a prop but a symbol of a legacy. As we celebrate the enduring impact of Hunter, it's the minutiae, the nicknames, the automotive echoes, and the badge number that enrich the narrative and deepen our connection to the show's lore. These nuanced touches remind us that behind every crime-solving escapade lies a universe of thoughtfully woven threads, waiting to be unraveled by those with a discerning eye for detail. Hunter, unveiling the ever-changing arsenal of Detective Sergeant Rick Hunter in the annals of television history, few characters have left as indelible a mark as Detective Sergeant Rick Hunter. The 1984 TV series, simply titled Hunter, captured the hearts of audiences nationwide with its gritty crime-solving narratives and a charismatic lead. Amid the tapestry of this classic show, one intriguing thread weaves through the ever-evolving weaponry of our beloved detective. 
Over the series' duration, Detective Sergeant Rick Hunter, portrayed by Fred Dreyer, managed a remarkable feat that few could boast, an ever-changing arsenal that danced across firearm categories. From a 9mm semi-auto to a .44 Magnum, followed by an I Am I Desert Eagle, a revolver, and then circling back to a semi-auto pistol, Hunter's weaponry journey is rivaled only by the fluidity of the cases he tackled. The true fascination, however, lies in the paradox that while the guns changed, one constant endured. The show's iconic introduction, etched into the memories of loyal viewers, featured Hunter gripping that 9mm semi-auto without fail. Amid the action-packed sequences and evolving arsenal, the producers held steadfast to this emblematic choice, a subtle nod to continuity amidst the ever-shifting storyline. Beyond the hardware, Hunter's presence was heightened by his distinctive catchphrase, works for me. These three simple words encapsulated his pragmatic approach to solving crimes, and in turn, endeared him to fans who eagerly anticipated his utterance. This phrase, more than a linguistic quirk, became a rallying cry of sorts, emblematic of the show's unyielding spirit. As we reflect on Hunter, its impact continues to resonate. The ever-changing weaponry mirrors the adaptability and resourcefulness demanded of law enforcement. And while bullets flew and cases unraveled, Detective Sergeant Rick Hunter remained a symbol of unflinching determination, punctuating his feats with a resounding works for me. In the realm of television history, few shows have navigated the complexities of character evolution and storytelling quite like Hunter. And though time may have blurred its edges, the legacy of a detective and his revolving arsenal endures, a testament to the power of innovation, continuity, and the phrase that became his anthem. As we bid adieu to the captivating realms of the 1984 TV series, Hunter, we find ourselves not just spectators, but active participants in a narrative that has etched itself into the tapestry of our memories. Just as the characters embarked on their journeys, so did we, embarking on a journey of nostalgia and emotions, one that connected us across time and space. As the curtain falls on this exquisite tale, take a moment to reflect on the moments that tugged at your heartstrings, the plot twists that left you wide-eyed, and the themes that resonated with your own life. Hunter wasn't just a series, it was a mirror reflecting fragments of our own stories, inviting us to explore the complexities of morality, the shadows of our choices, and the light of our convictions. What were your personal rendezvous with the enigmatic protagonist? Did you cheer for triumphs or sympathize with struggles? This is your platform to share your whispers of connection, to intertwine your own memories with the narrative threads of Hunter. Your thoughts and stories enrich the legacy of this series, ensuring that its impact endures beyond the screen. So, whether it was the electrifying chase scenes, the heart-pounding suspense, or the profound philosophical musings that linger in your mind, don't hesitate to pour out your reflections. Let the echoes of Hunter resonate in the corridors of your thoughts, and share your tales with fellow admirers who have walked this transformative path. With gratitude for the time you've invested and the tales y'all share, we celebrate the shared experience that Hunter has offered us. Your thoughts, like the layers of a complex storyline, add depth and dimension to this extraordinary universe. Until we cross paths again, weaving stories and memories anew, remember that the legacy of Hunter lives on through you. Thank you for your time, your passion, and your unique connection to this timeless series. 